guys. So as many of you know, the V-Man Jackhammer is my favorite bit. I use this thing everywhere. And I happened to be talking to a friend the other day, and we were talking about how much it plays in a lot of our tournament results. I started going back and thinking about it, and then every single FLW regular season event, all six of them, and the Bassmaster Classic, I weighed at least one fish, most tournaments, multiple or a bunch of them, off the Z-Man Jackhammer. So I wanted to go over and just talk a little bit about which baits I was using at each tournament and how I was catching them. Um, so if we start at Rayburn, that was where I was using that green shad. This is probably my favorite colored one. Mimics the shad perfectly. It's got a little bit of that um, chartreuse color in it, you can see. And it just makes it really stand out well for the um, fish. And that's where I was throwing that. I was actually throwing a pearl razor shad on that one at the time. So you can see the put that together, it just really makes that bait stand out. Perfect profile of those fish. I'll trim that up a little bit. But when I was at Rayburn, I caught a nine and a half pounder the first day on it. And that really, it jumped me up so far. It had me in a really good position after the first day. I was able to make it to day three, and finish it off with a 19th place finish in the tournament. So that was really uh, great. It was an awesome start to the year. And a lot of it had to do with the Z-Man uh, Green Shad Jackhammer. Then we went on to Florida. We were at the Harris Chain. That was another one where I was fishing some offshore hydrilla, and that's what I was doing at um, Rayburn as well. And there I was taking another one of these gold jackhammers. And same thing, half ounce one. And I would throw that out there. And you can see it just it mimics those gold shiners they got down there, really kicked off a lot of light. And I was catching a lot of those fish offshore on that. Um, I was mixing it up between that and then I was throwing a trap as well. But with that combination of it, I weighed in probably, I would say a third of my fish in that tournament. The trap was a little bit heavier. They were reacting to that a little bit better that tournament for some reason, but it was still a big player, weighed in a bunch of fish on it. So let's see, where did we go after that? We went to Lake Martin. So this one was more of a spotted bass fishery, at least how I was attacking it. Um, I wasn't fishing for uh, large mouth I could see on beds or anything like that. I was fishing offshore more. But the final day on day three that I fished, I decided about halfway through, uh, the spotted bass just weren't really playing out. And my only shot at making that final day that I thought was to run up one of the creeks, get back in some of that dirty water and start throwing that jackhammer around again. So picked up that green shad jackhammer, and I started running a bunch of banks around lay down, wood, anything I could find out there, and it was probably, I caught a little largemouth right away, and it didn't help me at all, I put it back, and I kept going along, and I found this little, like, turn before it went into the little pocket, there's a little point there, had stumps in it, I rolled my bait right past that, and it got hammered, it was a nice spotted bass. Um, I didn't expect them to be in that back, far back in that creek, but hooked them, flipped them into the boat, and it went a long way. It jumped me up to some more spots. Um, I finished in, where did I finish that one? 28th of that one. So it was another top 30. It's a good tournament. Um, and then, after that, I had the Bassmaster Classic. That was where the jackhammer did its heavy lifting. Um, I was mixing it up. I had to use that green chat on. I'm telling you, favorite bait. And then I also throw a chartreuse in white, you can see here. Um, it's very similar to the green chat. This is a little more natural looking. It's kind of clearer. The chartreuse in this one's more of a yellowy color. This one's got more of a green color to it. And the silicone in those two, you can see are a little bit different as well. Um, but they were the ones who punched that I was throwing at, um, uh, at Gunnersville. And what I was doing, how many Day one, I caught them cranking. Day two, I caught some cranking, and then I started throwing that chatterbait around some dots, and then I caught a good one. It was like probably four and a half. And then on day three, the final day of the Classic, I caught a limit that was pretty good in the morning fishing the um, jackhammer. And, or I'm sorry, fishing that crankbait. And then I started running around, and I was trying to catch some bigger fish. And that was when I picked up that green shad. The water had started clearing up after some of the rain we had gotten in practice. And... 
I caught one over five off this like stump field. There's some milk oil mixed in there. There's good free spots out there setting up back there. And I was just rolling it, kind of twitching it, jerking it around. Just getting them to react to it. I caught that big one. So it jumped me up pretty well there. And then I went out to this other spot that I had caught one on my final cast of practice. And I caught it with kind of a fluke at the time. Not thinking much of it. And I went back out there. And uh, I was able to catch another one that was like a four pounder. And it jumped me up. I had like almost 19 pounds the final day. It got me a top 20 finish in the Bass National Classic, which was awesome. I was pumped about. So from there, that was when we hit that delay in our schedule and everything was getting postponed. Um, so I didn't get the fish again until we went to Lake Chickamauga. And there, that was a tournament that I had one area that I knew I could go throw a chatterbait and I could punch there. And I was throwing that um, Palmetto bug a lot and a turbo crawl to go along with it. But um, in the morning, I would start off throwing the jackhammer and covering this hydrilla line it was in about eight foot of water. And I caught quite a few fish the first day on it. It was real nasty condition. Those fish weren't, they were reacting more. They were chasing, they were roaming in there. So another time it played big. I, I don't know the exact number of fish I weighed off of it, but the second day of the tournament, I um, was able to catch two at, no, yeah, two at the very end of the day that were able to jump me up to 53rd. I just missed the cut there for the top 50 for the third day. And from there, we went up to uh, the Mississippi River. And I found two spots in practice that were very good. And I was catching with most of them a lot of jackhammer on like little channel edge. The fish were just setting up there. They would kind of come out of the grass and grab your chatterbait. They would just eat it up real great. But um, I was throwing a green pumpkin one there just to give me a solid green pumpkin. It looked so I guess a lot of like the perch or uh, crayfish that were eating up there at the time. And basically what I was doing is I would roll it down there. Um, the first egg we had a fog delay, and it, this was a morning bite, so I didn't catch any the first day on I caught them all flipping. The second day, I pulled up to the area I wanted to start on the first, caught two and a quarter right away, and then I jumped over to another creek that I was fishing, and I went up it, and I caught like four and a half, and um, another one on it to get me three quick ones, and I went and flipped up another four and a half, another one there. So that was one where you could see the jackhammer play a big role. I was in a bad spot after the first day. I only had three fish I weighed in. So the jackhammer kind of saved the day there, like it does a lot of times for me. I was able to salvage a 73rd place finish out of that tournament. From there, we went to Lake Erie, which, if you know me, I love catching smallmouth. And that was my game plan, but it was hard to find those fish on Lake Erie. So I started... Um, Happened to figure out some largemouth deal. I, I was able to get one area that had a lot of fish in it. And the same thing, I took that green pumpkin and I also took the, uh, where is it? That guy right here. This was actually probably the exact jackhammer I was using there. And uh, the green pumpkin shed. And what I would do is fish this one grass line that it was underwater, but I had a little bit installed my Lorenz uh, side imaging, and marked it all up. And I was just, the first day I was struggling terribly. I don't think, I didn't have any fish in the boat when I had the camera guy leave me at around 2 o'clock and I was doing it 3.30 or 4 that day. And I went in there, I caught one right as he was leaving, but it didn't even get put on the live camera because it wasn't a big one. But I was able to catch a limit in probably about an hour in there, which was awesome because then I got to go run back out to the lake and I got to go drop try to catch a couple of keeper smallies that got called out some of those large mouth and got me in a better position but saved the day again and then the final event up at Surgeon Bay that was of course one that it was all I was fishing 20 to 30 foot of water I drop shot at one of the Z-Man trick shots the whole time so didn't play there but this bait right here that combination it gets you the biggest bites and it gets you a lot of bites and it might be a confidence thing for me or it might be something to it so you probably should check it out uh, if you also want to check out i'll show you exactly how my box is all set up uh, i have another youtube series with tackle storage tips so we'll go over
how I store my jackhammers and some little ways to keep them better and uh, ready to go for all your tournament needs. So, thanks for watching. If you could do me a huge favor, please subscribe. I'd like to hit 1,500 subscribers here soon and before the season starts. So, thank you. And check out the Z-Man jacket.